on your screen you are watching the world's first amd gpu driven over usb 3 this is suitable for a mac linux windows solaris and even web assembly over web gpu because behind the scene it is simply lib usb lib usb is a library for usb device access from linux and various other operating systems this is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. In this video, we are going to dive into a breakthrough in the world of GPUs and Macs, connecting an external AMD GPU to a Mac over USB courtesy of TinyCorp and TinyGrad. From complex engineering runs to the doors, this opens for Mac users. There is lot to unpack in this small video. The thing is that for years and years, Mac users, especially those on Apple Silicon, have felt the pain of losing out on eGPU support. While Intel Macs could tack on external GPUs for workloads like video or ML inference, Apple Silicon users found those avenues closed. But until now, thanks to the new engineering in the open source tiny grad project there is a way to use usb connectivity to hook up an external amd gpu even on a macbook let's break down what this really means and how it works i'm going to show you everything which i have learned so far from the twitter account of this tiny corp and also i will be talking bit more about what exactly this thing is i have just compressed it into this one simple table to understand it better so let's talk through it this and seems like an engineering magic to me so the system uses an adt ut3g adapter built around the asm 246pd chip the key component that tunnels pcie over usb3 the team at TinyCorp went as far as patching the firmware, enabling this unconventional connection. But why USB 3? I think partly because of broad compatibility and user space access, and there is no kernel driver hacking needed. And that probably has just taken it to the next level of performance. You know, and I believe that in the future Thunderbolt or USB 4 might deliver higher bandwidth, but USB 3 offers a solid accessible starting point right now. Performance over USB 3 is capped at 10 gigabits per second versus significantly higher bandwidth on native PCIe connections. This really does not hurt data transfer speeds, particularly for massive workloads, but clever engineering ensures a main hit is on data copy in and out. Once kernels run on the GPU, computation speed itself remains unaffected. So this is the overall thing. One point I really, really want to stress about is, uh, and the pain point which many people complain about Mac is the prompt processing. And this new eGPU and, and the innovation from TinyCorp could really help there because this breakthrough really matters for AI and LLMs. One of the biggest hurdles in local LLM inference on a Mac is prompt processing. Prompt processing is the stage where the model ingests the user's prompt and sets up the input context before generating any output. This task is extremely memory and bandwidth intensive, meaning Macs with limited GPU memory or compute power are at disadvantage Offloading prompt processing to a powerful AMD eGPU just eliminates this bottleneck, resulting in much, much faster response times and practical ability to run larger, more capable models. Now, what could be a real-world benefit, such as, for example, on thing like MacBook Air or something like that? So imagine you have a MacBook Air with an M series processor, which is power efficient and portable, but not a compute monster really. 
being able to connect an external AMD GPU for ML, inference or graphic tasks transform your hardware. You got the flexibility of a desktop workstation in a portable package without the cost, heat or battery drain of a giant gaming laptop and which is not a small thing in my opinion. Of course, there are caveats. You are limited to the AMD stack and you need specific adapters that might require fiddly firmware updates. The USB 3 bottleneck does exist. So for highest end AI training or maybe 4K, 8K video pipelines, you are better off with native PCIe or Thunderbolt bandwidth. But if you go through their website, they have this tiny box too. And they haven't sponsored this video and they have no clue about this. So I'm not sure what exactly and how exactly this thing performs. Now, the thing is that the open source nature, thanks to tiny grad, I would say, is another massive plus. This approach isn't tied to Mac OS. It should also work on Linux and Windows via libUSB. The team's work rewriting the driver from scratch means greater portability, transparency and the ability for hobbyists or researchers to tinker, improve or build their own solution. And if you look at the first diagram which I showed you and this diagram is from their Twitter account which you can also check out. So credit of the photo goes to them for this one. So if you talk about the big picture, if this technique gains adoption especially with amd gpu suddenly viable for broad plug and play expansion it could really dent nvidia's near monopoly in the ai and workstation space right now nvidia's cuda lock-in and proprietary hardware ecosystem help keep their prices sky high <clears throat> so wider amd eGPU compatibility driven by open source could tip demand over amd pushing competition and eventually more affordable gpus for everyone and that is the goal isn't it lowering the barrier for ai research and creative professional alike this could be an inflection point for making ml compute both cheaper and more open which could just spur innovation across the board and that is my hope too so look to wrap up this isn't just a uh, i would say technical feat it's potentially a shift in the balance of power in the world of gpu compute so if you are eager to try it out i you know i will drop the link to tiny Crats github repo in video's description so you can check it out also before i let you go i also want to introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are camel ai camel is an open source community focused on building multi-agent infrastructures for finding the scaling laws with applications in data generation, task automation, and world simulation. And I will <coughs> drop the excuse me, drop the link to their website in video's description. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you're already subscribed, please share it among your network as it helps a lot. Thank you for watching.